everyone and welcome to the Badinari analysis video. In today's video we're going to be analysing the motifs that are found in section B of Badinari. So first of all let's just recap what motifs are. A motif is a short melodic idea and just as we discussed in the, uh, the other video is I want you to imagine that a melody is like a jigsaw and if we have a jigsaw we have lots of different pieces and as they come together and they fit in the correct place, you create the final product, which is the picture. A, mo a melody is just the same. It has lots of different motifs. And when these motifs join together, it creates the finished melody that we hear. And Bach has based the melody on two short melodic motifs. In the last video, we gave these motifs names because it made it much easier when we're analysing. So we have motif X, which looks like that and sounds like this. And then we had motif Y, which looks like that and sounds like this. And what we found in section A, and we'll find this in section B, is Bach repeats these motifs throughout. He's only using these two motifs really, and he's creating his melody from these two motifs. And so he, therefore, he has to repeat them. But what we will find in section B is these motifs now are going to be more developed. He's going to start changing them. He's going to start playing with them. He's going to be more creative. And of course, this will make the piece of music fresh and exciting. So as we're analysing, you may start to notice that these motifs may look a bit different because he's starting to develop them and modify them. So let's start analysing. As we discussed in the previous video, we are going to be focusing mainly on the flute because the flute plays the melody. But the genius of Bach is... He uses other instruments, in particular the basso continuo, which is on the bottom line. He uses the basso continuo occasionally to play some of those motifs and occasionally to play uh, in, interlinking with the flute. So, to begin, section B. Bach starts off with motif X. Let's have a listen to what this motif sounds like. Now, the next piece of the jigsaw, the next motif that Bach uses, he does something a bit different. He starts to develop what, we, what we've heard. And this is where he starts to use the basso continuo. So we can now see that both the flute and the basso continuo are now going to be interlinking. This motif is called motif X1. And the reason why it's called X1 is because first and foremost we we have the same rhythms as motif X. You may notice some similarities but there are some differences. He's divided the motif between the flute and the basso continuo and also he's inverted the melody. So you may notice from motif X it is descending. However motif X1 is ascending. So he's inverted the melody, he's changed it around. Our next melody, or the next motif I should say, is motif X. We can see similarities. Here's what it sounds like. The next motif that he uses is motif Y. However, this is modified he modifies it by adding four semiquavers at the end. Let's have a listen to it. The motif that follows is motif Y1. Very similar to motif X1. It's very similar to motif X, but it's developed, it's changed. Motif Y1 is very similar to motif Y. However, he has extended it. You may notice it's much longer. And he's also started to develop it. You may notice that it's going higher in pitch, just as we heard 
in section A. So he's actually developing it and he's making it more interesting. He's making it exciting and it's actually very virtuosic to play. It's very impressive. Let's have a listen to it. Now that melody does continue on the next page and I've just highlighted it there. This is the genius of Bach now. He starts to change what we're used to. So we've been used to the melody being in the flute. Now he's started to use the basso continuo. So the basso continuo is now playing motif X. This is modified because he's actually ending it with a quaver and two semiquavers. Let's have a listen to it. This is continued in the basso continuo as he now uses motif X modified because now it ends with two quavers. Let's have a listen to it. So we're now starting to see and hear that this jigsaw is becoming even more interesting because of the development of the motifs. The flute now takes over with the next motif. This is now called Motif X2. The reason why is he's altered the shape of the melody. And also he started to use ornaments. So he's used an appoggiatura. He started to change the rhythm. He's now using demi-semiquavers. So let's have a listen to Motif X2. Again, we call it X2 because it has some similarities to Motif X. You may notice the rhythm that he's using, but now it's, it is developed further through use of ornamentation and rhythmic uh, development. Our next motif in the jigsaw that he's using is Motif Y modified. He's modified it because now he's starting Motif Y with four demi semiquavers, which I've just highlighted. Let's have a listen to it. Again, this continues on the next page. The flute next plays the motif, and you may notice that it is also interlinking with the basso continuo, as I've highlighted. This is motif X1 modified because he's ending it with demi semiquavers which I'm just going to highlight there. Let's have a listen to it. Remember X1, we've seen X1 previously at the start of section B and we call it X1 because not there is a there's an interlinking with the basal continuo, he's divided the melody up and also he's inverted it. It's going higher in pitch. The piece ends with the final motif being in the basso continuo. And this is motif X3. He's changed the shape of the melody. And also you might notice it actually doesn't even have an anacrusis this time. So let's have a listen to this. So he's managed to use all the motifs throughout the piece of music. Now we can actually see how the jigsaw fits together. We're going to hear the music played in context and we're going to see where all these motifs link up through the flute and the basso continuo as we see the final jigsaw revealed and we hear it in its full context.
Thank you for joining me in today's video. I hope it makes sense and I hope the analysis helps you in understanding how Badinaria was created. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.